I remember one old timer at school told me, be prepared to spend in tooling, tooling, fixturing, all that accessory stuff, what you spent on the mill itself. All right, welcome to episode five of Style Basics. I honestly didn't think that there'd be three episodes. So today I would like to talk about some of the tools that you'll need to have, some of the things that you'll need to buy to, to mill on the style if you're just starting out brand new like I did. Um, in fact, you know, to set the stage, let me, uh, let me go back a little bit and, and reintroduce myself. Uh, I'm Garen. <laughs> For me, it all started in 2019. I was watching YouTube as one does and I came, apro came across, and I can't remember which, but I came across a couple of channels, YouTube channels that I became enamored with. Now at the time I was, I was doing blacksmithing. I was blacksmithing out of my, my garage. You know, I'd pull the truck out and, and wiggle the anvil out and pull the forge out and I would, you know, heat, beat and repeat. And I was learning how to blacksmith and I uh, did a little woodworking. I just loved to work with metal. So uh, again, 2019, I started watching a gentleman named Aaron, Aaron Powder, design creativity in tech and started getting inspired. Started, he, I was introduced into the world of CNC and just amazed at all of the things that you could uh, invent, prototype, create, and use for yourself or others. Um, I also, I've got a list here if you can't see that, but I also, there's another channel, Betts Technique Industries, a gentleman up in Canada, I believe his first name is Pete, Peter, uh, and also an amazing, absolutely intelligent uh, machinist and example who inspired me. They both had one thing in common. They both had Sile X7 mills. Peter had the, the Siemens 808D. Aaron has, I think, an LNC controller. So that's kind of how I, how I got started. I, at the time, I, I had zero CNC experience, okay? Nothing. Zero machine, uh, machining experience, not a machinist. I'm a, I'm a career soldier, okay? I know how to shoot and clean an M16, all right? And uh, paint rocks and rake leaves. Those are my expertise, expertise coming into this. But I was inspired and I, I, as, as children off do, I took a leap of faith. And I knew retirement was coming up, so I, in 2020, 2020 I put it in an order for this uh, Silex 7 behind me. At the time, we called that the Silex 720. So in preparation for the mill, I knew I wanted a shop. And I knew I wanted to make some, I had some decisions to make because I knew I was going to retire soon from, from the army. And so my wife, Lori, and I decided to build this shop that we're in right now, which is simply just a, an oversized uh, garage, right? Uh, one side is a wood shop. This side, which is about two car garage, is for, for the metal shop. That's basically what it is. You know, I call it a shop. Everyone else calls it a garage. It's in camouflage. It looks like a garage on the, outs on the outside. So anyway, we built the garage. And before the mill came, Uncle Sam came knocking at my door one more time, once more into the fray, right? So I deployed. I was gone for 13 months. The first month gone, the mill arrived and, and sat, well, somewhere here in the middle. It's, it just sat here until I got, I got home about a little over a year ago, okay? And then that's when my, my journey started. I, oh my goodness, I saw this mill and then realized that, oh boy, I do not know the first thing about CNC machining, about machining, about any of this. So I had to figure out what to do. I immediately joined the Facebook group. In fact, if you haven't joined, if you own a sile or you want to own a sile, join the Facebook group. That, they, it's a wealth of knowledge. The guys on there are a thousand times smarter than me and have a thousand times more experience than me. They're amazing. In fact, you don't even have to ask questions, okay? Most, 99.9% .9 of the time, when I'm not liking posts, I'm, doing, I'm, I'm searching for answers because Everyone has the same answers and they graciously answer them five or 10 times. So the information is usually there, but that wasn't enough. The Facebook group wasn't enough. The YouTube channels, what they, they weren't enough. And, and this was a big purchase. So I decided I went to school. 
I use my GI Bill and for the last year I've been studying precision machining technology. The first, first half of the year was all the manual stuff, okay, the mill, the lathe, the surface grinder. Geez, we started out with what is a file, right? We, we learned it all. In fact, I became, I took the test and became a certified level one machinist. Yay. Uh, the second half of the year was all CAD, all CAM, G-code, CNC operations. Of course, all of that was on, on a Haas mill, but thankfully that, you know, in broad strokes, conceptually, that translates over to using this style. So after a year studying precision machining technology, having six amazing men that I could, on a day, daily basis, coaches, mentors, I could ask them questions. I was definitely the most interested student there. I can tell you that right now. Interesting and interested. I really wanted to know that knowledge. I needed to know that knowledge to support this, this, uh, this addiction, this hobby I have, which is working with metal. So now after a year, I'm going to take a break. I'm not going to go back to school and I'm going to, I'm going to work on the Silex 7 on my machine. And I'm going to consolidate that information that I've been learning over the past 12 months. I'm going to be working on my Logan lathe, on my, on my mill, and I'm going to be filming it and sharing it with you. So now you know where I'm coming from and now you know where I am now. All right. I'm not a SME. I'm not a subject matter expert. Uh, I'm a subject matter enthusiast, I guess. Okay. But I'm, I'm not an expert by any means, but you can see where I came from, from absolutely nothing, owning zero tools, owning nothing. This side of the garage was completely empty to where I am now. And I am making chips. Okay. I know enough to, I know enough to crash the mill. I can tell you that much. What I'd like to do today, and this is for the newbies out there. What should you expect to have to purchase to actually run this mill? Okay. Say you spend 30, 40, $50,000 on this mill package, then what, right? If you don't have any of the equipment, you need to buy the tools, right? You need to buy the measuring tools. You need to buy the air compressor. There are certain things that you're going to need to do or else it's just a big old paperweight or cement pad weight. It just sits here. It weighs a lot. So the first thing that I got and it was actually gifted to me when I started my manual machinist course were, was a set of Mita Toyo measuring devices and I love them. Okay. Uh, again, if you've made it this far and you're an advanced machinist, <laughs> I don't know why you're here. This is super simple stuff, but we're going to start with the scale, right? This is a six inch scale. I'm going to be talking uh, in, in inches here. Uh, I have to go, go now go and buy all this in metric. Six inch scale. So what is that? 150 millimeters. Let's see, I'm learning. Next dial calipers. These are very good for making outside measurements. You can do to some degree inside measurements. Okay. You can do depth me measurements for an approximate depth, etc., etc. These are dial gauge. I love the dial gauge. In fact, I, I seem to trust the dial gauge a little bit more than the, than the digital. I also have a pair of digital, but these repeat, you know, when you get them out and you do a field check, you pull it out and you bring it back. They repeat back to zero and they're easily calibrated. Love these. You're going to want a dial test indicator. This is also by Miti Toyo. I recommend if you're going to buy two, make sure you get one that goes out to the thousandths accuracy and the ten thousandths. If you're going to buy this in metrics metric, I recommend one that goes out to the micron level or three decimals 0.001. Uh, that, that comes in handy when you're going to be calibrating or, or measuring, doing certain things on, on the mill off times when we're measuring run out or whatnot, we want that accuracy out to a one micron or 10 thousandths of an inch. If, if it's just tramming in a vice, it doesn't need to do that. 0 0.01 millimeters or one thousandths of an inch is just fine. Another absolute necessity is an outside micrometer. Okay. This one is a zero to one inch or zero to 25 millimeters in metric. And it is the most accurate method that I have to measure something on the exterior. Very good for diameters of round objects and everything else. Uh, my next step, once I save enough money, is to 
expand this selection in inch and metric, right? I want bigger, 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 bigger. They're amazing, very accurate. All right, let me set this to the side. This is another important thing that you're gonna to wanna to have in your machine shop. This is uh, an articulating arm with a magnet, mag magnetic base, okay? I use it every time I mill. I throw this on the nose of the spindle and, with a dial test indicator and I tram in my vise. Not everybody does it, but I recommend I do it. Vices come out of tram really fast. And if you're milling a part where you're gonna flip it, it needs to be in tram across that fixed jaw. In fact, that's definitely a video for for the newbies, another basics video. Um, I've got a big six inch vise I'm gonna be putting on here for a future project. And it, down the road, I'll, I'll share that. It's an easy process, but it's a very important process to be able to tram a vise. Speaking of which, you're gonna need a vise. I've got two vices. I've got a six inch, it's a Kurt style vise. It was pretty cheap, about 450. And then I have a very high precision M-lock vise, the 125. Okay, 125 millimeters is a five inch vise. It either has a, it has a fixed jaw for a single station, but it's also set up to do two stations. So you can have a G54 and a G55, or you can have two parts, right? You can do, or two work coordinate systems when you're milling with two parts in there at the same time. So I've got this written down. In fact, it's so small, let me get my readers. Obviously, safety glasses. You're gonna to wanna to get these. I get these at Walmart and they have the little cheaters on the bottom because, yeah, geez, I'm gonna be 50 soon. So the eyes are going. Okay, so yeah, 425, that's how much I spent for that six inch vise. That Kurt style. If you bought the Kurt in the same style, the same ish style, that's that's about 750 and up. Okay, and up. Vices are expensive. The M lock M lock that starts around one grand U.S. dollars. That doesn't include shipping or inflation. Let's see. Altogether, to set up my shop, right? There's tooling. Altogether, to set up my shop, I've spent about five grand. Okay about four grand on the fixturing, the collets, the collet chucks, right? Just, just on tooling alone, I've spent 700 bucks, okay? Your end mills, what do I got here? End mills in all the different sizes, master tool, shell mill, keyless chuck, things like that, it, it adds up quick. Your torque wrenches, your ER32 collet systems, your ER16 collet systems. I have a 12 tool automatic tool changer. I suppose you don't need more. You could get 12 B, or ER32 collet chucks with a variety of, of the collet, right? The collet inserts for the tools. You could get just 12 and that would be fine. My goal was to get a tool. I wanted a, a tool for every call it chuck and call it, right? I didn't want to have to take them apart. So I've got, boy, let me, let me count this real quick. So right now I've got about 20 tools set up and that's actually nothing compared to what some of these guys are doing. I swear they have hundreds of tools. I don't know how they do it, but they do it for a living. I'm doing it for a hobby. And I joke with people that I, I joke with people that I run a not-for-profit business. Not that I don't want to make money, I just don't make money. As far as holders go, I, I started out with 12 ER32 uh, collet chucks, and then I bought a, just an assortment of collets. That's just how I got started. And then as my tooling grew, then I started buying other things, more ER32 if that's what I wanted to go with. I bought some ER16, and I bought some end mill holders for some of my heel, helical end mills. But a good, a good start is just to get one of those systems. You're probably looking at for a medium grade, uh, high precision uh, collet chuck, you're probably looking at about 80 bucks each, about a thousand bucks for 12 of them. And then of course, for every collet chuck you have, you have to have a retention knob. So those aren't too, too bad though, 10 or 20 bucks for a good retention knob. And, and they're all industry standard, easy to find. Then don't forget your coolant, if you're gonna run coolant. I, I, I bought coolant, I probably spent 
a couple hundred bucks for some coolant, but I actually haven't, uh, I'm not running it yet. I specifically bought all the tooling that I have now so that I could run it dry. Uh, they're specially coated so I can run it dry or with air if needed. So you're probably gonna want a mill clamp set. I picked up a, a pretty standard 52 piece mill clamp set that I'll show you right here. And don't forget, you're gonna need a way to hold all these tools. They're not gonna all fit in the automatic tool changer and you can't, you can't leave them on the floor, right? So you're gonna need a toolbox to fit all of your measuring tools and you're gonna need some type of tool cart. If you can watch a video that I filmed last year on how I took a $10 filing cabinet and made it into a tool cart. Works great for the BT30 tooling. In the end, it all depends on what you're gonna make, what you wanna do, where you are, if you're a novice like me or not, it, it depends on what you're gonna buy. But this, these tools that I've assembled in the last six months really, have been a really good start. I remember one old timer at school told me, be prepared to spend in tooling. Tooling, fixturing, all that ac accessory stuff, what you, what you spent on the mill itself. That's definitely not pro proved to be true yet, but of course I'm only six months in. Well, I think this video is waxing a little long, so I'm gonna call it, call it quits. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you on the next time. Bye.